very proud of my son. I bet you are, Joe. I'm Eldonzo. I'm Dees. And we're back again on a Saturday morning coming at you. Uh, I had a pretty good week. What about you, Dees? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I think it was pretty good. Uh, of course, in the opener, we're going to catch some flack for that, okay? But we always do a cold open, and uh, we're going to talk about that. That was the Ocean Gate uh a reference to the Ocean Gate sub that they found on Thursday. I think it was Thursday afternoon they finally confirmed it, right? Yeah, that, yeah. yesterday was when yeah. all, all the news broke that they found it. And so we're, we're going to get into that. Of course, Hunter Biden's back in the news. Joe Biden's back in the news. Trump's back in the news. Everybody's in the news. Uh, it's like we always talk about, it's been a busy news week. I think just about every week has. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's been dominated by this whole sub thing and you know, the uh, Hunter Biden uh, plea deal kind of quickly got brushed under the rug because of uh, five rich idiots in a submarine. But so and we're going to talk about that. And if we, if you look, if you think we're going to be hard on them, we are going to be a little hard on. Them. Yeah, we you're feel right. Bad for we the are. families, but we're going to be hard on. Them. We're going to tell you exactly why we're being hard on them, because this was play stupid games, win stupid prizes. But all right before. And I just want to make a quick announcement if if any company out there that specializes in heating and cooling would like to sponsor our show please do and while you're at it put a damn ac in this studio <laughs> jesus yeah i probably should be doing that uh, you know the boys look, are sticking to the thigh here oh yeah you got some of that that swamp action going mm -hmm. on down he always complains about how hot it is in the I'm studio. I'm a fat guy, man. I can't handle this heat. I think it's comfortable, but, you know, I'm used to heat. I'm used to working in the heat and stuff like that, so I'm okay with it. But, no, you're right. We do need to get that done. We need to make it the uh, the Sky Hammer Studio again and not the Hot Hammer Studio. The okay. Ice Hammer Studio is what we need to turn this son of well, bitch into. tell you what, you, you, you bring me an air conditioner and I'll put it in. How's that sound? Like a window unit? Yeah, well, I got a portable. Anyway, we're getting off track here. People are listening to this right I'll now. I'll go, go find we, a window unit right now. People are listening to us going, these guys fight like they're an old married couple. Well, pretty much. It kind of feels like, like that sometimes. You know, I've, I've been with him for 15 years, folks. I think I'll just keep him. Uh, so anyway, getting back to this, let's let's talk about the uh, the submersible thing. Do you have that story pulled up, Dees? Which there's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. Just let's, why don't you break it down for the audience in case they have missed it. I'm sure everybody's heard about it. Who the hell's going to miss it? Well, they ain't got time to... Eight, eight. They do not have time. Sorry, Mom. They do not have time to read it. So maybe people are busy and have actual jobs and they're not on the radio like we are. So let's go ahead and go over this real quick. Uh, basically, there's a company called Ocean Gate. Uh, it was founded by a man named Stockton Rush and another man. I can't remember his name. He's all over the news as well. But he basically got bought out and now he's a minority owner. Doesn't matter. Anyway, they specialize in uh, oceanic. Uh, exploration type thing and for the last i don't know three or so years two three years they have been uh going on these trips to uh 12 and a half thousand feet below sea level to explore the titanic where it lies off the coast of uh newfoundland and uh it, it's not a um tested sub i guess you'd say or no it wasn't tested yeah. it didn't go through any safety he basically built it out of you know <laughs> spare parts uh as the landing gear whatever you want to call it the rails was made out of uh uh scaffolding scaffold scaffold framing so we're going to go over it so here this is what's going on with this it was built cheaply. Yes. Okay. It was done as cheap as they could do it. They built this out of carbon fiber. Their big thing was this is going to be the first submersible built out of carbon fiber. Well, I got a feeling it's going to be the last one that's ever built out of carbon fiber. There's a reason. Tit well, it wasn't just carbon fiber. No, but they that Tit was titanium. Yeah, titanium carbon yeah. fiber, lightweight, cheap stuff is what they did. Yeah. Okay. And there's a reason. I, well, there's a reason nobody's ever going to do it again. But the reason that we're so down on these guys that went there. These millionaires, billionaires, they spent two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's like they go up there, like, yeah, we'd like a ticket for the sub. I'd right, be two hundred fifty k. Okay, this thing was built really cheap, right? Yeah, it was built really cheap, and it hasn't been safety tested, right? Nope, hasn't been safety tested. And you didn't have the best and the brightest building this thing or engineering it, right? No, we didn't. We we wanted diversity. We don't go by meritocracy. Okay, yep. Yeah, but book us. Let's go see the Titanic. Well, they went down to the see the Titanic, and they became a part of it. So I got some stuff here that I brought up, and we were looking at this earlier. Uh, this is from the Daily Beast, and this kind of goes over some of the issues. The, uh, the headline is, the Titanic sub was made cheap, and that may have sealed its fate. 
I don't think may have had anything to do with it. This thing had, didn't they have like a joystick from a Nintendo or something operating this thing? It's a Logitech uh, 710 controller that you can buy brand new on Amazon right now for about $40. $40. They're yeah. using $40 ba Basically, it's control. like a uh, secondhand PlayStation controller. And people um, were quick to jump on Amazon and start leaving reviews about how, you know, this is perfect for my submersible and... So forty dollar controller, no, and no means of uh, like there's no radar, sonar, or anything. They relied on the uh, polar whatever, what's it, polar prints or something like that. The the vessel that brought the sub out there was they, that yeah was actually had a hand in controlling it. So a couple things. No, no, they didn't control it, but they had communication with the sub, and they would drop the sub in the water, and the sub. You know, just drops. It literally just free free falls to the bottom, and then the ocean liner or the 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 mothership, as you will, uh, tells them where they're. You know, hey, you're you're 400 yards this way. You need to, and then it's got little four little engines that basically look like little office fans, and they can then navigate to the the actual Titanic. So this was this. This came out of the Daily Beast. The vessel, which had its maiden voyage in 2021, is largely experimental. It's unlicensed, which means no regulatory body inspected it to ensure its safety. It also lacks basic emergency features like a location beacon yeah. to send its coordinates in case of disaster or even a navigation system that other deep sea submersibles have. Wouldn't that be, now, day, wouldn't well, that be day one? You, you'd think so. That would be like the first thing you'd want to do is, okay, if something goes wrong, how do we know it? Now, this is where I, this is about the ship. So in, Instead of having the navigation system, OceanGate relied on a control room on board an expedition ship on the surface to help m maneuver the Titan around the ocean. So, yeah, it basically would tell them, hey, you need to. They couldn't control the movements, but they could see where the Titanic was in relation to where the uh, sub was. Right. And they would basically tell them you need to go this way or that way to get to the Titanic. They Pretty had no the power is, to actually pilot. No, they were flying blind. So yeah. they had to rely on the surface to get there, which is, it's ignorant. Yeah. I can't believe anybody would spend that kind of money to get on, on a tin can. It's not even a tin can. It was carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, so this that you're also, bolted into. There's, I mean, even let's just say that something went wrong 50 feet down. You can't, you still can't get out. No, like, you there's know nothing I mean? you can At do least then it. they would have had a snowball's chance to to survive but once they got down to where the pressure was so immense it, it didn't matter i mean so this guy david strakan who's a senior analyst at a naval warfare firm strike pod systems had this to say and and this guy's probably smart but it doesn't take a genius to figure this out these types of vehicles are built and deployed by very specialized highly knowledgeable people you're talking about the complexities in a hostile environment that the deep sea is so he's pretty much coming out and saying this this is not a an easy task or something that should be taken lightly to go down 4000 meters and something that's experimental and I don't know really never I mean it, it made a couple of voyages but it's I don't even know if they actually fully tested it. Um no, I believe I read there were only six like fully I don't know tested uh craft manned craft that were capable of reaching that depth. Five now. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and, of course, none of them were anywhere near. I mean, they couldn't have got there in time anyway. Again, it didn't matter because they were dead the day they lost contact. So this is something else. Though lightweight and durable, submersibles aren't traditionally made of carbon fiber because it simply isn't as strong as metal. Despite this, the company used the material extensively for the Titan and even leveraged it as a marketing point on its website. Uh, quote, Titan is the world's only carbon fiber submersible capable of diving five people to 4,000 meters. Not anymore. Uh, Straycan, that guy we were talking about, explained that both crude and remote controlled submersibles typically use a material called synthetic syntactic foam, which is known for being incredibly durable yet pliable at the extreme pressures of the deep sea. However, genius OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush told Composites World in 2017 that he opted instead to use carbon fiber because it was more cost effective. <laughs> I don't think we're worried about costs at this point. If you're going to charge people $250,000 to go down, A, to the bottom of the sea, 
Uh, you should give them the bang for their buck if they're paying you that much. And B, if you're going to get in a submersible, you better damn well sure and be sure to check out what the quality of it is. You know, why don't you get an Alvin or something that they used to find the Titanic with? Something that was built by the Navy. We're going to get into more of why this is baffling to me and and D's as well uh, yeah. right after this uh, commercial break. 